Here we're gonna look at some series testing theorems which easily follow from the Cauchy criterion for series. So let's recall what that is real quick. So the Cauchy criterion for series says that the series n goes from one to infinity of a sub n converges if and only if for all epsilon bigger than zero there exists a capital N which is a natural number such that if little m and little n are bigger than or equal to this capital N then the sum of these terms a sub m plus one up to a sub n and those are in absolute values is less than epsilon. So the way you want to think about this is that this ensures that not only can we make the terms from the series as small as we want, we can make sums of the terms of the series as small as we want as long as we go far enough out into the tail. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is prove the comparison test. So our setup is that we have two sequences of non-negative real numbers. So we've got zero is less than or equal to an, which is less than or equal to bn. And then we have two statements, and those statements are actually contrapositives of each other. So what that means is that if we prove one, the other is true kind of for free because the contrapositive is equivalent to the original statement. So what we'll end up proving is this first one, which says that if the series BN converges, then the series AN converges. So if the sum of the larger terms converge, then the sum of the smaller terms also converge. And then the contrapositive of that says that if the series AN diverges, then the series BN also diverges. So if you add up the smaller terms together and that diverges, then when you add up the larger terms together, that also diverges. So like I said before, we're gonna use this Cauchy criterion to prove this, so let's get to it. So let's say that we are given epsilon bigger than zero, and we know that the sum of the larger terms converge. So in other words, this sum BN converges. So now we'll use the Cauchy criterion on the convergence of this BN to find some capital N, which is a natural number, such that if little m and little n are bigger than or equal to capital N, we have this sum of terms BM plus one all the way up to BN is less than epsilon. So like I said, that kind of setup is guaranteed by the Cauchy criterion applied to this series BN. Now the next thing that we wanna do is notice that we can get rid of the absolute values here because all of these are non-negative. So that means that this is exactly equal to BM plus one um, plus up to BN. But now, since all of the A terms are less than or equal to all of the B terms, we know that this is bigger than or equal to AM plus one all the way up to AN. Great. But now, again, we know that all of the A terms are bigger than or equal to zero, so we can reintroduce the absolute value here. So this is equal to the absolute value of AM plus one all the way up to AN. But now if we look at the extreme left and right hand side of the equality, we see that we have satisfied the Cauchy criterion for the series AN. So in other words, we can finish this off by saying this series AN converges. Good. So now we're done with the proof of this because like I said before, the second statement is the contrapositive of this first statement. So now let's go ahead and move on to another series testing theorem. Now we're ready to look at our next series testing theorem. We're gonna look at something called the absolute convergence test. It says that if we take the series formed by the absolute value of all of these a n terms, and we know that that converges, then the original series, in other words, the series of a n converges. And if this series over here on the left converges, we actually say that the original series absolutely converges. But the converse of this is not true. And in the case that this one converges, but this one diverges, we say that the series is conditionally convergent. So to recall that kind of stuff, I'll look at your Calculus 2 notes or something like that and read the textbook that you're using for this course. Okay. so. For this proof, we want to use something called the triangle inequality. 
and that says for all real numbers x and y, the absolute value of x plus y is less than or equal to the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of y. So this is an extremely common tool for real analysis type proofs. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to it. So let's say that we are given some epsilon bigger than zero. We want to use the fact that the series of the absolute value of the terms converge to find some capital N, which is a natural number, such that if little m and little n are bigger than or equal to capital N, we have the absolute value of the absolute value of am plus 1 plus all the way up to the absolute value of an is less than epsilon. So what we did is we applied the Cauchy criterion to the series of the absolute value of the terms. That's why we've got these nested absolute values here. But we know that all of these terms inside of this outermost absolute value are non-negative since we're taking the absolute value. So what that means is we can get rid of the outside absolute values. So in other words, we know that the absolute value of a m plus 1 plus all the way up to the absolute value of a n is less than epsilon. And again, that's just because each of these is bigger than or equal to 0 because we're taking the absolute value. Now we'll apply the triangle inequality to this to mash all of those absolute values together. But notice that's going to create something that is smaller than or equal to, but that's okay because that inequality helps us out. So this term is going to be bigger than or equal to a m plus 1 plus all the way up to a n. Like I said before, this bit right here is from the triangle inequality. Just the triangle inequality with more than two terms perhaps. But now if we look at the extreme left and right hand side of this inequality, we see that we have satisfied the Cauchy criterion for the series of non-absolute valued terms. So in other words, we can finish this off by saying that the series AN converges. Great. So now um, I want to look at one more before we're done with this video. For our last series test, we're going to look at something called the alternating series test. And for this proof, we're actually going to use the nested interval theorem instead of the Cauchy criterion. So let's see what the alternating series test says. So if we've got all of these non-negative numbers, a1, a2, a3, a4, and so on and so forth, and they are decreasing, so a1 is bigger than or equal to a2, which is bigger than or equal to a3, all the way down, which is bigger than or equal to an, which is bigger than or equal to an plus one, and so on and so forth. And the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n equals zero, then we can form this alternating series which converges. So the sum as n goes from one to infinity of negative one to the n plus one a sub n converges. So like I said, we're gonna use the nested interval property in order to prove this. So let's recall what that says. So let's say we've got this collection of closed intervals. They're indexed by the natural numbers. So we've got i sub n as n goes from one to infinity and they are nested. So in other words, i1 contains i2, which contains i3 and so on and so forth. Then the result, which is equivalent to the axiom of completeness for the real numbers, I did a proof of that in an earlier video, says that the intersection as n goes from one to infinity of i sub n is non-empty. So like I said, that's the nested closed interval theorem. Okay, so now we're gonna use this in order to prove the alternating series test. So which means we need to construct some nested closed intervals here. And so here's the way that you wanna do that. So we're gonna let I1 equal the closed interval given by A1 minus A2 comma A1. Great. And then we're gonna let I2 be the closed interval given by a1 minus a2 comma a1 minus a2 plus a3. So let's talk about why we know that those are nicely defined intervals. So we know that all of the a terms are positive. Further, we've got this ordering. So that ensures that a1 minus a2 is positive, and it ensures that a1 minus a2 is less than a1. 
And then furthermore, because A3 is non-negative, we know that A1 minus A2 plus A3 is bigger than or equal to A1 minus A2. Now we're gonna continue in this manner. So here we're going to let A I3, I should say, be equal to A1 minus A2 plus A3 minus A4 up to A1 minus A2 plus A3. So notice we kept the ending point and we changed the starting point in this case. And in the previous, we kept the starting point, but we changed the ending point. And that's actually what we're going to do. We're going to alternate changing the starting and the ending point for each of these um, intervals. So for I4, we will write this as, so we need to keep the starting point in this case, I, A1 minus A2 plus A3 minus A4, comma, A1 minus A2 plus A3 minus A4 plus A5. Great. So now I'll let you guys think about a careful way to write down the construction of these intervals. I don't think it should be that hard. But you want to notice by construction, we have two facts. The first fact is that I1 contains I2, which contains I3, and so on and so forth. So in other words, we've got nested closed intervals. And then furthermore, the length of IN is equal to a n plus one. So let's talk our way through that. So notice the distance from a one minus a two to a one is a two. So in other words, the length of this is a two. The length of this is a three because notice the starting term and the ending term differ by a three. The length of this is a four again because the starting term and the ending term differ by a four. So we know that the length of this approaches zero as n approaches infinity. Great. So now we've got all of the parts built in order to finish this off. So let's maybe go ahead and do that. Now we're ready to finish off this proof with the tools that we built on the last board. So I want to notice that the odd indexed intervals can be written in the following way. So I sub 2k minus 1 is the closed interval S2k up to S2k minus 1, where by this S sub 2k, I mean the 2k partial sum of this alternating series. And then I sub 2k will be S sub 2k up to S sub 2k plus 1, where again, I'm using s sub 2k to be the partial sum of this series. And then notice that this immediately implies that the length of i n is the distance between s n plus 1 and s n, but that's going to be a n plus 1. Kind of that's true for all partial sums here. Okay, great. Now what we want to do is notice that by the nested interval theorem, we know that the intersection as n goes from 1 to infinity of i sub n is not empty. So since it's not empty, we can find something in that intersection. So we will take s to be some element from that intersection. Great. And now what we want to do is claim that s is in fact the limit of the sequence of partial sums. So let's go ahead and make that claim. So the claim is that the limit as n goes to infinity of s sub n equals s. So now let's go ahead and do that. So let's say that we are given some epsilon bigger than zero. Let's find some capital N, which is a natural number, such that if little n is bigger than or equal to capital N, then the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 is less than epsilon. So I've tweaked my index there, but I'm allowed to do that. And we know that we're guaranteed to be able to do this because we know the limit of the terms a sub n is equal to 0. Now what we want to notice is the following. So note that the absolute value of s n minus s must be less than or equal to the absolute value of a n plus 1. But since a n plus 1 is positive, then 
we can get rid of the absolute value. And we know that Sn minus S is within An plus one because these are both members of I sub N. So let's maybe go ahead and notice that. So notice that S and Sn are in I sub N. So S is in I sub N because it's in all of the I Ns and Sn is an In by our construction up here. Okay, good. So now we know that this is less than epsilon by our construction just right above, but then looking at this bit of the inequality and this bit of the inequality, we see that we have just proved that the limit of the partial sums equals S. But the limit of the partial sums being S tells us that our alternating series converges. And that's a good place to stop.